What's up, guys? Mike here, head trader at True Trading Group. June 13th, another good day. This has been a great week. It really has been a great week. I couldn't have asked for anything better. My, my first week back trading after the two-week vacation in Italy, um, I'm really happy to just get right back and, and to get into a groove like this and have the week that we're putting together here. It's been a solid week. Um, today, I caught a really nice short on restoration hardware on an earnings gap up. I faded that gap up. We gapped up right into the teeth of a key resistance level. Um, the gap up looked very extended. It was a huge gap up and it was right into the teeth of that resistance level. I didn't think it was going to have enough juice to get through it. I took the short, faded it down in the morning, caught a really nice trade. Uh, that's the bulk of the gains today. And then we had CODA, C-O-D-A, nothing major there. I just caught a little trade, like a 50 cents a share, um, profit on the CODA trade. So just a little adding, adding to the day. Uh, nothing major. Two trades there today, but the big one was RH. But the lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about, I'm going to go over this restoration hardware trade with you. It has a lot to do with game planning and, and decision making. Um, but and also reading, reading gap ups and, 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 and knowing when and helping you guys determine when to look for a continuation on a gap up and when to look for the gap up to be faded. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about in Restoration Hardware. And then on Coda, we're going to talk about a specific bull flag that you really can't trust. Okay, bull flags are bullish patterns, but there is one specific bull flag, bull flag, excuse me, that I want you to be conscious of. So let's get to this RH trade to start. We got to go out to the daily chart. And the daily chart, guys, are this huge gap up here on this earnings print. And this is an extended stock. Okay, we were gapping up to like 121. Okay, we were gapping up right up to here. Okay, I uh, didn't hear was where we were gapping. Oh, it's not cooperating with me, this little square. Nah, it's not working, guys. I'm sorry. The square is not the square is not working. Um, we were gapping up right to here to like 121. Okay, we were at $94, $95 yesterday. That's a huge gap up right into where the teeth of a key resistance level. You've got a double top right here around 120. You've got the 200-day moving average right here at like 122.50. And not shown on my chart, but at the 100-day moving average was at like 120.50. So you've got two major moving averages and a previous double top that can keep a lid on this gap up. And you have an extended gap up. Okay, and that's really what we're going to talk about here about, about looking for a gap fade or continuation because – it's very difficult for a stock to have such a large gap up and then still have enough juice to break through a major resistance level. Typically, when I see real big gap ups and they're right below major resistance levels, I'll try to get short in front of those resistance levels and catch a little bit of a gap fade. Okay. On the flip side, let's say that we gapped up to 125. Let's say we gapped up to here. My whole game plan and sentiment changes. Because now we've gapped above that resistance level. We're through it already. So now I would look for the 120 to 122 area to become support, okay, on a little bit of a pullback off the bell, and then look for a continuation move to what? Fill the gap, which takes you to your next resistance point, okay? But that's not what happened. We didn't gap above that resistance level. We gapped right underneath it. So I'm looking at that 120 to 122 area to become resistance, and then I'm looking to fade that gap. Now, had Restoration Hardware came from, let's say, here. Let's say this was yesterday's print. Let's say we didn't close at 95 yesterday. Let's say we closed at 110. And then we gapped up to here today. That's a much smaller gap where it's not going to be as difficult for the stock to break through that resistance level because the stock's not extended on that gap up. OK, that would be a much smaller gap up and then you have a greater chance of pushing through. But the bigger the gap up, when a stock gaps into the teeth of resistance or right below resistance, the bigger that gap up, the harder it is for that stock to break through that resistance level. OK, so I read this as an extended gap up right into the teeth of resistance and I made up my mind I'm getting short restoration hardware today. That is why game planning is so important. You have to make your decision Game planning is so that you make your decision before it actually happens so that when the window of opportunity presents itself, you're ready to pull the trigger like that. And you're not trying to make your analysis and make your decision on the fly because 
while it's the, the time it takes you to do that, that window of opportunity may close. So the game plan today was watch for the gap up on restoration hardware. It's an earnings gap up. You probably get a quick push off the bell because that momentum from from the, the the good earnings number, and then I'm looking for that a quick push to 122, 50, 122, which is right around that 200 day moving average, and then I'm looking for us to get rejected, get back below 120, which is this double top, and then fade the gap. That was the game plan. So when that happened off the bell, I was ready to pull the trigger. I'm not waiting to see what happens, then analyze, then make my decision, then pull the trigger because by then the window of opportunity may close. Okay, so having a good game plan is something that we've talked about a lot this week because the pre-market game plans have been working spot on and it helps you have confidence pulling the trigger because now you're reacting. Okay, now you're just reacting. So let's go to the intraday chart now. Okay, let's pan this over. And you guys can see right off the bell, we gapped up, we pushed higher and put in the high of the day, 121.75. At the time of that quick push to 121.75, right like we talked about in the pre-market game plan, we were like 121.63 bid. And all of a sudden, like a buck 50 um, of bids just got completely taken out within seconds. And we were right down towards like 120.20. 120 25 within seconds and i was like that's the rejection that i was looking for up at that 122 area and when i saw that i jumped in on that quick flush down and i got short at 120. okay I'll take you guys to my trade announcements here you guys can see short restoration hardware at 120 stop loss 122.50 so my stop loss is right up towards that 200 day moving average risking 250 a share there short at 120. Right away, we get this continued flush down off of that selling pressure. And right away, I just said, okay, I'm going to take some take some off the table there because that was a quick little flush. And I just covered 25% of the position back to my trade announcers at 116.92 for a $3 gain. Okay. Then I held on to some, looked for VWAP to become an area of resistance, which we did. And then we rolled it over. And on that new low of the day, covered more of my position at 115.78 is where I cover the bulk of the position. And then you guys can see we got a beautiful retest. Okay, here is the beautiful retest of the initial morning low. And then VWAP previously showed us resistance, right? VWAP showed us resistance there. So now as we move over, you see now VWAP lines up with the initial morning high. We got a beautiful retest and denial at that initial morning high. And on this fade down to new lows, I got flat my position at 113.25 for about a seven dollar uh, per share gain. Okay, six dollars and seventy five cents on that final take profit. And it's a really really nice trade right off that game plan. So short first take profit, second take profit, third take profit. Wrote it down further and further each way, locking in those gains. And it was a solid trade, and that's where I made the bulk of the gains today. Okay, so it was a nice one. It was a nice trade. It was it was a good gap fade. It was a very calculated gap fade because of the things that I just mentioned to you about the extended gap up and that really key resistance level in the 120 to 122 area. Um, and I capitalized, took advantage of it, had a good game plan. And I was able to pull the trigger quickly and that's what got me the great fill. And that's what got me the great trade. All right. So that's restoration hardware. And then we got Coda. Now we're going to talk about the bull flag. Okay. Can you guys see the bull flag on this pattern? If not, let me draw it out for you. Here is your bull flag. Okay, there it is. There is your bull flag on Coda. Now, bull flags are bullish patterns. Okay, typically you see the flag pull up, consolidation, and then the breakout and continued higher. But you need to be cautious, or not cautious, you need to be conscious of bull flags that form right above the initial morning high. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Coda got on my radar after we broke through the high of the day right here. We had the heaviest volume the stock had traded so far on the day when we broke through the initial morning high. That's important because the heavier the volume on the break through the initial morning high, the greater chance you have of this previous high becoming support. Okay, so then when I draw out my Fibonacci retracement level here, what do you see? The 38.2 Fibonacci level now lines up with the initial morning high 
and that could create a nice area of support. So you need to be careful of bull flags that form up here because what I don't want to see happen is you get long inside the flag and then you stop out when the flag breaks down because you're not reading the pattern properly because you're reading just this bull flag, but you're not taking into account the initial morning high and the 38.2 Fibonacci level that sits directly beneath it to create an area of support. So when you're stopping out of your position, I'm actually getting long and I got long right there on Coda. Okay. And it's because of this bull flag pattern. I'm not saying to avoid bull flags. Bull flags are great patterns to trade. I'm just saying be conscious of bull flags that form above the initial morning high, because if you're going to get long inside this flag, that's fine. Just be prepared to risk it down to here. Okay. So maybe that means you have to lower your position size. So be it. But I don't want to see you guys get stopped out right here because you're like, oh, the bull flag just broke down. Meanwhile, I'm getting long because I'm saying, okay, this initial morning high in 38.2 Fibonacci level is holding support as I expected because of how strong the volume was when we broke through that initial morning high. Again, the stronger the volume on the break through the high, the greater the chance you have of support kicking in. Then we have other indicators like the 38.2 Fibonacci level line up at that area. It just increases the chances of support being there. So on that pullback, guys, right there, I got long coda. 13.53 stop loss right below um, that $13 area. And then you guys can see we kind of pan this over and I just started taking some profits off the table. I actually had to step away from my computer um, in the afternoon. So I started taking some profits off because I didn't want to hold my full position. So you guys can see I took some profit at 13.95, took more profit at 13.73, and then my final take profit right before the close at 3.57 in the afternoon. 1395 for my final take profit. So the final take profit was up. Let me zoom this out. Final take profit, guys, was right there. So not a not a home run trade. Just adding to the day. I took some off over here too. Okay, so there's the first take profit. Here was the second take profit, and there's the third take profit, and there's the entry. Let me pan this in so you guys can see it better. Okay, so there's the entry. Okay, so there's the entry. Take profit, take profit, take profit. So not a home run trade, just a single adding to my day. But the, really what I want you to take from this trade, guys, is being conscious, okay, being conscious of bull flags that form right above the initial morning high because I don't want to see you get long up here and then get stopped out. Meanwhile, I'm getting long down in here and you're getting stopped out. Okay, you're getting stopped out right here. Okay, so be conscious of those bull flags when they form right above the initial morning high. Okay, that's it, guys. Tomorrow's the last day of the week. I'm looking to keep this momentum going. Like I said, I could not be happier with uh, how the week has gone. With my first week back, it really feels great to get back into a groove and be hitting it, hitting it running like we have been. Chat's been on fire. We've been calling out some good ones, been catching some good ones. I'm really happy about about the way that the whole group is trading. So that's really it. I'll see you guys in chat. Take care.